Hi, I'm Carolyn, and today we're gonna to talk about being the guest at a wedding. Of course, at our age, we have been to so many weddings. Many of us have had, if not one, maybe a few weddings of our own. So we might feel like we're somewhat of experts on the subject, but as I was preparing this year for upcoming weddings that I have, it kind of hit me that I need a refresher course. So I just dove into binge watching whatever is out there on tips for being a guest at a wedding. And I was surprised that things have definitely changed. There are things that I learned that I thought I should pass it on to my friends. And I would also love it if you guys have tips that you have learned in recent years to leave that in the comments so we can all learn from your experience as well. So I also went shopping and I found, uh, I'm not sure how many dresses, five or six dresses. Dive into how to be a guest at a wedding in 2023. So number one, let's start with looking at the invitation and really figuring out what type of wedding it is we're going to. Since the pandemic and when everything was closed and then when everything opened up, like nobody can get a venue for the life of them. So they started being more creative. So I feel like there's more variations of weddings than in our day. In our day, it was kind of, you know, maybe it was black tie, maybe it was semi-formal, but you basically wore a cocktail dress. Was it below the knee or was it all the way to the ground? Kind of, you know, those were the choices. So now I think it's important to really look at the invitation and figure out what type of wedding it is that you're going to. So once you figure out what type of wedding it is that you were invited to, then it makes it a little easier to go shopping for that dress. And I always say, if you're not really sure if the invitation isn't really very specific, I always err on the side of more formal. I'd rather be more dressed up than underdressed. That's just me. First of all, I do like getting dressed up, so it's kind of like a treat. My day-to-day -day life is very casual, so I enjoy an excuse to get dressed up, and I don't mind if I'm the most dressed up person in the room. It doesn't bother me, but I would definitely rather be more dressed up than too casual. So if you're not sure, I would say err on the side of dressier. <laughs> Number two, I'm gonna say is finding a comfortable pair of shoes. And that is something that I fail at every single time. And I never learned my lesson. I just love wearing heels. I think they look so beautiful, but they're so uncomfortable. So where's that happy medium? I started kind of doing some research, trying to find what type of shoe would still look really pretty and be high enough to still make my legs, my short little legs look, you know, prettier than in flats. So I'll share with you some of the ideas that I came up with. But I will tell you that a few years ago, one of my nieces got married and I was told multiple times, it's at a vineyard. There's grass everywhere. What do I do? Yes, I wore a pair of stilettos and was walking around on my tippy toes. And every time I went back and slid right into that grass, I was cursing under my breath, but it was nobody's fault except my own. So something that I did order now, I haven't actually worn them to any event, but I got them, are these heel protectors. So this is the heel cover. If you want to wear shoes like this and you just put that over the heel, they come in different sizes. This was the biggest one and it's a tight fit on this. Possibly not the cutest thing in the world, but you know, if it's gonna save your heel, I think it might be worth it. So then last year my son got married. Again, I was warned, he told me, it's outdoors, there's gonna be grass everywhere. It was actually even in San Miguel, Mexico, which is cobblestones everywhere, and his wedding was actually out in the country. So yes, there was grass everywhere, but I went and got myself a pair of very high stiletto heels. So if you are invited to a wedding like that, I think there are really cute sandals that you can wear. And then being outdoors, I think usually you can get away with something a little less formal. So 
wearing flatter sandals would work. And if you're like me and you're of the shorter persuasion and you like having an extra couple of inches added to your height, maybe wedges are gonna work better. So there are a lot of better options. So finding a pair of shoes that actually last from beginning to end of wedding is probably not possible, but I did kind of look into a few different options that they have out there. A classic pump is probably just the perfect shoe for making any outfit look classy. However, it is not the perfect shoe for comfort. It hurts. So I did a little investigating and I did come up with the Sarah Flint pump. So here are some of their claims. One is that they have a wider toe box, which would be wonderful if this is true for my feet because my feet are very wide. They also say that they have extra padding. Apparently six millimeters of extra padding on the footbed. That also sounds very good because that's where you're putting all your weight is down there. So if they have extra padding, that would be of course helpful. And then they say they have arch support. It's supposed to have a shaped insole to support your natural arch of your foot. That too would be a place that normally hurts my foot. So if they're giving me a little support there, that would be good. So I, oh, and they also have a steel rod stiletto for extra stability. And then these Stuart Wiseman seem to come very highly rated. They have again the block heel, they come in a lot of different colors, and I mean, the reviews were very good. People wearing them for like 12 hours straight at their own weddings. And so, you know, that might also be something. They're not really the style that I really love. I don't like anything around my ankle because I, I have fat ankles. <laughs> we're so hard on ourselves, right? Yeah. But I do feel I have very thick ankles. So I don't like to draw attention to that, but if it gives me a comfortable wedding outing, I'm willing to maybe at least investigate how comfortable these shoes might be. So I also found these mules, which look more comfortable to me because again, they have more of a block heel. And I think I like a mule because you sort of can slide your foot in and out of it a little more easily. And you don't have the back of your foot rubbing in any way. So I kind of like the idea of a mule. They don't always look as dressed up, but I think these ones are. And if you get them in like a metallic, they come in a lot of different colors, but if you get them in a metallic and this one has like a really cute little detail on it. Um, so I think these ones might be kind of fabulous. So they're another pair that I want to investigate. So there you go. I do think that if we can figure out how to have happy feet at a wedding, I think we can dance till like the sun comes up and still feel good. So for number three, let's get into the dress we're gonna wear. So first of all, and I know I sound like a broken record, but I want the dress to be comfortable. So the things that I look for is I always want a bra that I can wear and it's not fussy. It's not a strapless bra. I have tried so many strapless bras. If you guys know one that stays up and really holds the girls in place and does everything that a bra is supposed to do, please, please tell me what it is because I have never found one. So I, always want to find a dress where I can just wear a good old regular bra with it. And then things that I look for in a dress that I feel personally make it comfortable for me is I don't want it too short, I don't want it too tight, and I don't want it to have any fussy element to it. Something like maybe a, a belt that needs to be tied. I'll always be fussing with trying to make that bow perfect or I just don't want anything fussy. I just wanna put it on, feel comfortable, feel good, feel like I look good, feel confident when I wear it. So just a dress like that. And then I always photograph myself because this is something you're going to where you are gonna see this dress 
showing up on all your friends and family's social media for the next month. So I definitely take a photograph to make sure that it comes out good in pictures. Some dresses just don't. I know that's weird, but some dresses just don't photograph well. So I do that. So I take pictures of it to see what I look like in the dress in a picture. And then I sit. I cross my legs, I bend over, I do things. I don't just stand in front of the mirror real straight and say it looks beautiful because most things will look pretty good if you just stand in one spot and don't move, but it needs to be functional. I need to be able to sit. I need to be able, oh, I do a little dance to make sure I can get my moves on in the dress. So I try to do what I might normally do in the dress just to make sure it feels like comfortable. So I have a lot of good things to say about this dress. It's really long on me and at first I thought maybe I needed to shorten it so that it's just below my knee, but I'm kind of digging how long it is. I think it makes it look even more classy that way. Um, so it fits great. So I always say I want dresses that I can wear a regular bra with. Well, ladies, you don't need to wear a bra at all. There is enough, like the fabric is thick enough that nothing is poking through. Um, <clears throat> it's tightening up around here with, you know, it has the, uh, what do you call these things? I can't think of it. Um, anyways, those things that keep everything tight and straight are right in there. And um, I don't know, you can sit in it. You can <clears throat> cross your legs in it. <laughs> I just can't balance. What else can you do? Um, I can dance in it. Mm -mm. Yeah, I can. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's passing all the wedding dress etiquette. <laughs> Carolyn's etiquette, anyways. Um, yeah, I'm comfortable in it. It's form-fitting, but it doesn't feel tight. Uh, it shows my little poosh a little bit, but I'm starting to just, you know what, own it. It's like it's there and bite me. What am I supposed to do? It's there. <laughs> so yeah, I'm kind of super digging the color. Ladies, do we love this color? Ah! Okay, here we go with a flowy dress. When I go to weddings, to be honest, I like a solid color because there's lots of photographing and I don't know, just you're with a lot of different people with a lot of different dresses and a lot of different colors. And I just think it starts looking a little much if there's a lot of pattern going on. So, um, I love this dress. It feels great. It's comfortable. You could wear a, um, halter. See how cute this is in the back too? I guess you could probably put it in a bow if you want. I just sort of draped it over. Um, you don't see side boobage. It's got those <laughs> things in there again, those hard things. Okay, I'm gonna Google what they're called or just tell me in the comments. It has a split right there. Of course, this green bag will of course go really nice with it. It has green, yellow, like a rosy pinky color, kind of purpley. Oh yeah, it even has like a little mauve in there. There's a lot of colors that are very pretty. So I would say this is a very typical dress you would see someone wearing at a wedding. It's classy, it's elegant, the color is not offensive, it's beautiful, but it's not gonna get in anyone's face. You're not like, going around screaming, look at me, I'm like the most awesome person here. You're just going, you're supporting the bride and groom in a very elegant way. But look at how the fabric is like all um, like gathered up all the way around. It's really super pretty. And the hem is actually a raw hem. Can you see that? <laughs> How do I show you? It's a raw hem. It's so, every single layer has like a raw hem on it. So this is actually a super pretty dress. Can I sit? Let's see. Uh, yes, hand me a glass of wine, even though I can't drink wine anymore because it upsets my stomach. Oh, the joys of being old. 
I used to love red wine. Oh my gosh, I cannot drink it anymore. Absolutely perfect wedding guest dress. The fit is really comfortable. The fabric, again, it is like um, form fitting, but it's not tight at all. Like you're not gonna feel tight in it. I mean, you don't even need to wear any sort of spanks or anything. This dress is just super comfortable. Um, okay, just give me a second. I'm gonna talk to my sister. Jet, you need this dress. She loves blue. So this color is going to look fantastic on her. The style is perfect. Jet, you gotta buy this dress. It's not expensive either. So yeah, this is for my sister. I don't think I'm gonna keep it because I'm really digging that green one. <laughs> Although I love this one. Uh, yeah, I think I'm more drawn to the green one. And here's something that I don't have to tell you ladies because we have known this one for many, many years, but of course you don't wear white. But I guess the other thing is, do you wear something with a white background and pattern on it? It's like, I don't know. I think that's getting too much into the weeds. Listen, first of all, nobody's competing with the bride. You know, they say don't wear white because you don't want to compete with the bride. You're, even if you wore a white dress, there's no competition. I mean, the bride is the bride. No one's wearing a dress that looks like that. You don't want to wear white because everyone's going to talk behind your back and say, did you see Carolyn wore white? <laughs> so that's why you don't wear white. Personally, I don't even like wearing a white dress. I, it's funny because I do love white. I don't like a white dress. I don't know why. I did wear one to my wedding though. 37 years ago, we just celebrated our 37th anniversary this past week. And another obvious one is not too sexy. Uh, you know, it is a family event. You know, there's children there. There's grandmas there. I know a lot of us are grandmas, but I mean, maybe even older than us. Do they exist? Are there people older than us? I thought we ruled the coop. But we're the oldest, but there's probably gonna be people there that are older than us. So, you know, just keeping it classy. I think classy is always the best way to go in every situation, but you know, at a wedding, I think that really is the way to look your most beautiful, to just kind of go in super classy. And then here is something that I think has changed. I remember that you don't ever wear black to a wedding and you shouldn't wear red. Black because too, like it's a funeral, this is a joyous occasion, you shouldn't wear black. But I mean, people always wear black to a wedding now and it looks beautiful, it looks classy. And then red, I don't know why, maybe just because it's too flashy. Like again, you shouldn't be taking any emphasis off of the bride, but you know, I, I think it's impossible to compete with the bride. I don't think there's ever a competition with the bride. They are the star, no matter what. But those are two things that I remember. We always said no black and no red, and I think that's ancient history. I think now you could wear either of those colors. So that's all I have to say about weddings, but what do you guys have to say? Any tips or tricks that you have, leave them in the comments. I can't wait. I hope you've got some amazing tips that I can learn from. Um, and outside of that, we are done for today. So thanks so much for being here with me and chatting and having fun together. And until we meet again, talk to you later.